Uh, we have one more assignment uh, for the semester, which is going to be the Pokeball, so I want to go over that today. Uh, we have this week, next week, and then our work in class time is done. So this is going to be a rather simple one um, to kind of finish off the semester. Um, I'm going to show two ways to do this. So one of them is using a sphere. So if you're not familiar with what a Pokeball is, and you've never had my animation class, or you've never seen a Pokeball, that's what a Pokeball is. Okay. So that's what we're going to be modeling uh, with some altercations to it. So one thing to note on this one is <clears throat> this one is there's two things that are going on here. One, there's a circle right here where the lens cap or whatever this is um, is at, and then there's a perfect line that goes around it. Okay. So looking at what we would use to start off with, like always, we go super low res, right? So 10 and 10, 8, that looks good. So with this, um, I can very easily insert an edge loop and create a perfect loop that would go all the way around that area. I would, however, have a hard time getting the perfect circle out of something like this area here definitely possible though so um, just a couple things that I want to show how the thought process for this works so I'm going to rotate this because this circle right here is pretty much like a perfect lens for that pokeball um, now if I go into my edge loops I add an edge loop here I go to these faces there And I extrude this and just push it in. Okay, so that gives me the opening for the Pokeball, but then you'll see what I'm going to have here on the side is I don't have a nice spot to create that loop. I can sort of kind of fake it if I insert an edge loop there and there and then use that. Let me hide my grid so you can see this better. Uh, extrude, push that in. So you see how I can kind of get that shape where I have a circle cut out and then I have that loop right there. So I, I kind of get it there, but it's not perfect, okay? So um, whenever you model something, especially new, you always want to just really quickly kind of assess your options as to how you can do that, okay? So I'm gonna try doing it this way again. And because he's basically a um, the top and the bottom are the same. I'm going to delete to that. Uh, not yet, though. Not yet. Um, I'm going to grab maybe a little bit more divisions in here, too. Maybe I'll go to 12 and 14. Yeah, let's try that. All right. So I'm going to go into this view here. And I want to create that gap. So whatever space this is, that's what I'm looking at. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it to where that's going to be. We've used insert edge loop before, so we can do this, and then I could do that to create edge loops on either side. Um, there's also an offset edge loop, and I don't believe it's in this menu here. Um, nope. Under mesh tools. Uh, Insert edge loop. There it is, offset edge loop. Okay. Uh, offset edge loop, I don't click on this edge, I click on this edge and drag, and it allows me to add two of them basically the same distance apart, which is obviously a huge time saver. Okay, so there's those, so I have the lineup for that. Now I'm going to jump to my front view, and I'm going to grab these faces here, or these points. Uh, actually, I'll grab the faces. I want those faces there. That should be good. Yeah, we'll just see what we get. Uh, and I'm going to right click and go to circularize. And I get a huge mess. <laughs> um, can I just rotate this? Let's find out. Um, kind of like that. All right. And. It did both sides because I have both sides selected, which is fine. I would just shrink that down. Let me deselect that one. Let me do them one at a time. That may give me better results too. So when you, whenever you model something, you're not going to know exactly how to approach it. Basically, it's going to be a lot of trial and error. So there's my circularize. There's my rotate. Uh, 
alignment, let's see, average, no, that's fine, yeah, that's good there, twist, that's as straight as we're getting that one, and then we can scale this in. All right, so not perfect, okay? So in this case, this the using a polygon, I've tried rotating it, that didn't work. I've tried putting it up, circularizing, that didn't work. Not to the level that I want this to work, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something different, which is a NURBS. And we don't talk about these too often because they're not really used as much as um, polygons are but you can do some very cool stuff with it. <clears throat> like on a NURBS, I could actually cut a hole right here and then a hole right there and then a hole somewhere else and it doesn't flinch at all. It's like perfect-ish. Perfect enough, let's put it that way. Um, so here's how NURBS work. Is if I right click, I don't get edges or vertices, I get control vertex and I get isoparms. I don't get faces, I get surface points or surface patches. So they're completely different in what we can do to them if I go to control vertices, you'll see how there's very few points that are actually on here, even though it's nice and smooth, okay? Now, what I can do is I'm gonna use a um, NURBS circle, and I'm gonna rotate it, and I'm gonna shrink it down. That's the size of this opening here. So that's what I'm looking at right now, is how big is that opening? Let's just say that. I'm going to go to create NURBS, um, oops, sorry, create curve tools, EP curve tool. And with this, I'm just going to click a point on one side, hold down shift and click a point on the other side and then hit enter. All I need is basically a straight line. This will be the distance from the center of this cut to the top. Okay. So imagine I'm modeling like half of this. So I want to basically get half of that black thickness. So we'll say that, that is good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two circles, this circle here and this curve, shift click this, and I'm gonna go to um, surfaces and go to project on surface. And under here, I'm gonna say active view. I'm in the front view. So what this should do is it's gonna project just like a projector, just like a planar mapping straight through that view onto that surface. Uh, I'm gonna take my tolerance down, like crazy down, and then hit project. Okay, so now what that does, if we look at this, you'll see that on the surface, there is a curve back here, a curve right here, and then a line right there, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna take these um, the surface with these curves on there and I actually want to pull it out and extract it as a separate piece So I'm going to go to surfaces again all the NURBS stuff is under surfaces Polygons are broken up into like three or four menus NURBS just are right here So I'm gonna go to the trim tool Now the way this works is whenever there is a break in the surface like an actual division It'll say okay. This is a separate piece that I could trim out so where the circle is, it recognizes that as a separate piece. You can see because the uh, checkerboard is a little bit finer. So it recognized that's a separate piece. If it didn't look like that, and it looked the same as this, then something has gone wrong and I need to fix it. The same thing with this um, line right here. You'll see that there's a line that goes around right there. It's dark line. Now what I wanna do is if I look down here at the bottom, uh, there's a key word here it might be hard to read, but it says keep, okay? So I need to click on the surface that I want to keep, not that I want to de uh, delete. The trim tool can do either one. Right now it's set to keep, so I'm gonna click on the one I wanna keep. I wanna keep this, and then I hit enter. So now it perfectly cuts out that circle there, that circle on the other side, and then that straight line, okay? So that's like amazing. Polygons cannot do that as easily as a NURBS can, this line is a perfectly straight line going across. That is a perfect circle right there. If I duplicate this and I rotate it around, come on, right there, you'll see that I basically have that Pokeball shape exactly set up like this. 
Now I want to be able to um, work in polygons now. Like I want to use the NURBS to create the initial surface and then convert this to polygons and then work from there. Now once I do that, it's going to make this entire surface um, a lot more dense and that's fine. So under modify convert, I'm going to go NURBS to polygon option box. So I'm going to start off with quads. I want everything to be quads still. Um, and then these four options here, I can change after. So for now, I'll leave it at control points just so you can see what it does. So tessellate, boom. <laughs> and what it does is it puts it basically back to a, a sphere. So this surface, and this is one of the things that's kind of weird about NURBS, even though these are cut out perfectly, if I go back to those control vertices here, you'll see that, maybe you'll see, there you go, that the points for the bottom are still there. It's actually reading the rest of the surface and it's just kind of like not showing the rest of it, okay? So when I converted this to a polygon, it brought it all back in because I chose that control vertex um, option. If I go into my NURBS tessellate for that sphere and I go down here under my tessellation options, um, we set it to quads. That was an option that we picked. Again, you could choose like triangles. In this case, it's gonna be the same. Um, <coughs> we set it to control vertices. Uh, let's set it to general and see what happens there, okay? So when we set this to general, you'll see that um, it's basically added enough divisions to maintain this circle right here. Um, it did add some weird stuff in there, obviously, that we didn't really care about. Uh, that's fine. And then under the general options, this is where I can start to play with um, what the settings are. So as I increase this number, you'll see that I get different uh, adjustments. Don't try to figure out what each one of these is gonna do. Just know that you go up higher, you get more divisions, okay? That's all we need to worry about. Um, so what we want to do, what we're looking for here is trying to find the cleanest surface we can get off of here without having anything weird going on like this, okay? We're not going to be able to do it, but just the cleanest one we can get. So this is um, general, and right now it's set to per surface. If I set this to per span, which is typically what I do, these numbers make a bit more sense. This 20 by 20 is actually dividing it 20 times this way and 20 times going up, and that's how we're getting that. So if I pull this down, like that and like that, maybe set this to 3. No, nope, maybe 2 is good. Four is actually pretty good, okay? So that looks pretty decent. It looks like the model is pretty clean still. Um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I could also change this to a different one. So let's, just for fun, let's change it to fit. And you'll see fit didn't add any extra crazy divisions here. Um, it does have some vertices um, in the way. So right here, there's a vertice here, there's a vertice there, then it adds this one here um, to create that top piece. So right now, ver uh, fit seems to be the best fit. So I'm gonna go to the standard fit options down here. I'm gonna change some of these. This delta, the lower the number, the more divisions you're gonna get. So this is kind of opposite. The higher it is, um, obviously we're getting less divisions, okay? You can play with some of these other settings we're not typically in NURBS long enough to even worry about them. You'll forget them before I even get through them. Uh, that looks pretty decent like that, right? Um, I think fits default though. Right. I think that one might work pretty good. No, there's too many divisions there. All right, I'm gonna go back to general. I think general was In general seem pretty good. I hit three on it and it doesn't really, you know, it's not it's not fantastic in these areas. And what I mean by that is right here if I were to assign a uh, Arnold shader, if I assign an Arnold shader like that, I turned the roughness down. I added a light to this. What I'm probably going to get is some funky display right where those um, edges are. Too 
too high. Let's go six, four. That's good. Okay. So this here, if I move this up, make that bigger, maybe make this a little bit brighter. It's too bright. There we go. Okay. So what I'm looking for here is as I come into this, am I getting any kind of weird um, colorations on here? So if you look right there, I'm getting this like weird drip. If I hit this and hit three, okay, you can see again, it's kind of like a weird way that it's laying it out. Um, if I were to put any metal on this, it would actually um, may look kind of like spotted. Let me pull this up so you can see this a little bit better probably in the projector. Right here, if you keep an eye on that, it looks like there's kind of like a puckering too. Find a better angle. Definitely at the top there is, but we can fix that. Okay, so let me switch my um, tessellation mode again. So I'm gonna put it back down to tessellate, back to fit. And this, I think, is actually gonna be the best one for the job. Okay, even though this has a lot of divisions in it, it needs those divisions in order to maintain the shape so we don't get any weird puckering on top of it. Um, Again, we can come down and start playing with some of these settings. Um, most of these aren't going to do anything because of just what we have our stuff set up to. When we start pulling these numbers, then we'll start seeing how these are going to start influencing that shape. Okay, So by default, just playing with that delta, we're able to get um, a pretty decent result. And what I did is I hit three and I'm just watching these edges. I don't want to see any of this stuff here or very minimal. Actually 0 0.05 looks like it might be pretty good. Oops, nope. Point zero 0.01 seems good. That's good. Okay. So that's pretty decent. And if I were to render that with Arnold, I should get a nice smooth shape off of it. Yep, that's working. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm pretty much done with this. Now I can't, I'm just gonna hide the light here. Um, I can't just delete this right now because the way that this surface was created is um, I created a NURBS sphere I created a circle, I created this line, I projected them, I trimmed them, and then I converted it to create this. So all of that information is baked into this item here. Now what's cool about this is let's pretend that this circle was not the exact size we needed. If I go back to the original and I save first, oops, I make my project and then I save first. Pokey, ball, oops, Sarcona. Pokeball. Anytime you deal with NURBS, saving often is key. They will crash your computer all the time. Okay, so it's saved. So now if I go to this original circle and I scale this down, and I'm just going to type it in because I don't know what's going to happen if I just try to drag it, you'll see that it updates. It updates what the circle looked like, it updates what the projection, what the trim, and then what the other stuff looks like. So um, in a very cool way, I can actually change what this looks like. And you could even use this for animation. I can even use this to help find maybe a better spot for that whole thing to kind of come together. So I think right there, that might be a good spot. Okay, good. Okay, so that's satisfactory. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the history on this. So I'm going to uh, go to edit, delete all by type history. I'm going to throw this stuff onto a new layer and hide it. And then I'm just going to reset where that guy was. Okay, so now he's back to being in his default pose. Now I'm going to extrude it to give myself some thickness. Too much thickness. Go. 
go. So that's good. Uh, then I can take this and duplicate it and rotate it upside down. Oops, 180, not 90. Now for this area on the inside, if you look at our reference picture, uh, there's not a whole lot of detail in that. It's just simply it's black. Here, um, it's actually just a flat black plane. Um, there are some like this, which obviously go into a bit more detail as to how they have their stuff set up. So um, that one there too is like pretty cool. Look at they use Substance Painter. <laughs> so we can really customize what we want this thing to look like um, after the fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, the edges here and I'm just going to create a sphere, just a polygon sphere. And I'm going to add some more divisions to this, like 50 should be good maybe a little bit more I'm trying to get these edges right there to line up so maybe like 51 now my pokeball does have an opening in the back too that's just how mine is designed if I didn't want that on my original one I would have deleted um, the back circle From the NURBS? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if I go back here, oops. I grab these and throw that on layer two also. There we go. So if I undo this, so I go to, um, this is another nice thing about NURBS, is I can untrim it. So now it's back to where it was. Um, then I can just. Go to this side, delete that. Mm, that's fine, I'll just delete that. And then for some reason this, um, this curve here didn't project all the way through again. So I'll just grab that, grab this, and then reproject that. And then I go back to this, I go back to surfaces, I go back to trim say keep this and so now the back is closed and the front is open and then I would go back to convert knowing what my settings were from the other one I set this to standard fit I set this to 0 0.01 and for tessellate so now I basically have the exact shape I had a second ago there it is okay so I have one without one with very easily you can make iterations so I could make a pokeball with a hole in the back and the front a pokeball with just a hole in the back whatever um, a long time ago when I was screwing around with NURBS I actually made a whole keyboard because I had the entire thing set up where I would basically just update the curves and it would update the entire shape of the key uh, based on like the space bar is longer like this it has a nice fillet on there and then the numeric keys dip in the tab key is a little bit shorter um, just something that you know so same thing with this again I could extrude Again, way too much. I think I would have learned my lesson. Nope. 0.05. Okay, so there's my other one. All right, so on this one, I'm just going to delete everything um, that's in this center area. So if I go to this paint selection, I can just grab that and delete it. And realistically, all I need is this and this this and that right so I don't need any of the stuff that was hanging up top with it I can come on make that bigger so it covers it I can scale it up a bit so it makes sure it extrudes I can grab these and these and just scale them out so that they fit nice and neat same thing on this side Okay, so now I have that filler part inside there. And then whatever I want to do for this, that's pretty much, you know, that's going to be up to you how you want to design that. Um, also, if you wanted stuff like this, these little panels cut out, again, you could add those too. We have enough divisions on this um, that realistically we could go into any area. There we go. 
So now we have that, and I could extrude that and then just push that in. So that's a Pokeball that's in a gang. <laughs> uh, if I wanted this to be on both sides, I'll hit undo. Um, I could hold down um, shift, sorry, hold down W, hold down the left click, hold, go to symmetry and say symmetry. And now when I select something, oops, now when I select something, I need to pick a different color. This is like way too bright. It's better. It also selects it on the other side. Okay, so when symmetry is on, that's what it's going to do. And then I can just extrude and then just push that in. So now he has like those whatever symbols on his helmet. All right, so a couple different options for stuff that's inside here. Um, I'm going to make a sphere, a polygon sphere. I'm going to rotate it. This is where that having this lined up perfectly works out great. Um, I'm going to delete all the faces. If I delete even more of these. I'll shrink that back in a little bit. Oh, I should probably give this some thickness as well. So let's extrude that and thicken it up. And all my extrudes are also being mirrored. So whatever I did on one side, we'll also do on the other side too. All right, so that's good. Uh, let's take this and scale it up so that it's right about there. And for whatever reason, that's not lined up good enough, so I will just move that in. Again, symmetry is still on, so I just need to focus on one area. So now here, very easily again, I can start to modify what this looks like. Just giving it some extrusions, I can create a very simple shape, something like that. Um, let's go in with our edge loop. Extrude again, pull that out. And then I'll go crazy with bevels. In prior versions of Maya, the um, symmetry tool did not work as good as it does in this version. So we have to do some stupid stuff sometimes, but we do get a lot of benefits out of it too. Sweet. So now we have this kind of neat setup here. Um, I'm also going to take this. I think this thing wants to be extruded inward. And add some bevels so that doesn't look stupid. So that looks pretty sweet, like that. And then I'm going to fill this in with some crystals or something. Now, picturing what the end result is going to look like, if I have this as a uh, bluish type crystal or whatever, metal or whatever it is, and then I have this as a black color, those things will really pop out more. And that's what I'm kind of envisioning as I'm creating this. So um, you have to have some kind of idea in mind of what you want the end result to look like. Now, it might be cool too is if I take this, oops, I'm going to turn symmetry off at this point want this and that. I'm going to pinch these sides together, push this in, so it's kind of like slanted like that. And then what I can do is, if I duplicate this correctly, I may be able to have it so that they're stacked, and then I could rotate them so that they would like open and close like an iris or something. Obviously it's not exactly like an iris, but 
like a pokey iris. Um, so I need to duplicate this all the way around in a circle. Oops. So um, I basically, I need my pivot to be right here. So if I hold down D and V and put my pivot there, that definitely works, but it's rotated. So it's gonna rotate at some weird direction, which obviously makes it stick out. If I group it, the pivot then stays way back here, okay? Now looking at how I want this thing to eventually animate, um, I want to consider that before I start duplicating. So if I take this and I say, okay, I want this to animate, you know, let's say like this, um, or I want it to animate like that or whatever it is, um, I want to do that here. I want to make sure my pivot's in the right spot. So I'm going to hit D and put this pivot like down in this area. And this gives me the option to rotate this like that and the option to rotate it like this. Now I probably need to scale this up a bit so that when I do rotate it like this, it doesn't come out. Okay, or like that. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm gonna group it now and I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm just gonna scoot it over like that. So 20 degrees. And then I hit shift and then hit D. And if you remember from last week or the week before I talked about duplicating stuff, you can use the shift D or you can go to the duplicate special, choose your rotate settings and it'll automatically do it all in one swipe. Okay. So that looks pretty sweet. It looks like a turbine or something. Um, and this is what I was talking about. If I go to this, um, these pieces here and I grab them like this and I rotate them, you can see how these are kind of rotating more like an iris type shape. Um, or if I rotate them like this, that'll control them going that way. Or if I rotate them like that, obviously I can have just a different kind of effect. So if I ever decided I want to animate this, I could animate these things like this, like that, or like this. Now, I don't see that iris effect happening because I it's gone. Because when I do this, I can't see the iris in the center of that. Um, also, I think it'd probably be more effective if this uh, pivot was actually at the top of this versus the bottom. So I'm going to put it up here. There we go. And then I'm going to go to my group. I'm going to duplicate. Again, I'll show you the other way in case you forgot it. I need um, 20 degrees is what I rotated the other ones to um, in the Z direction, not that. And then 20 into 360 goes 18 times, so I need 17 of these. So now if I go into here, I isolate them and I'm doing this just so it's easier to select and I unisolate them and then I rotate. There we go. Now I can get this kind of neat uh, irisy type effect on here. Maybe rotate it just a smidge that way so I don't have as much overlap. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. And then maybe I'll shrink this down too. Don't think of your modeling as like a an end to things. It's kind of just like an evolution of your, your idea. Especially in Maya. There's so much um, so much playroom you could really just go crazy with it. Yeah, that's probably good like that. Let me push this in some. Oh yeah, that's cool. All right, so let me grab my pieces again. Let me deselect and deselect. Uh, Alt B, how does that work? Oh, okay. Yes, please let me know when I do that. <laughs> there we go. So now we have this kind of effect on here. Again, maybe just a little bit less of that. That's good. And I could even just push this in slightly and then rotate it out slightly more. All right, so there we go. So now I have a, a neat way that I can animate this kind of iris opening and closing on here. Um, even scaling it down would give me kind of a neat look. I don't want it to look too bulky. That's the idea there. All right, 
so there's my there's the pokeball model okay and now I can do again anything I want I still have this side here um, that I could play with um, or I could say you know what I'm just gonna take this one let me hide this stuff I just duplicated that one, now I don't have to worry about it. And then this side here, I can just grab these two pieces. Oops. This is an, uh, a neat thing that I found out that Maya is capable of doing, is it'll recognize the fact that I've grabbed groups, and when I bridge faces, it'll actually bridge between the groups. So I don't have to do them individually. Um, and then I'll just insert some edge loops, or um, say blend. Oh, you stupid. Oh wait, no, sorry, blend, okay, this is good. And then I go to divisions, and now it'll do that. And that's obviously not correct um, enough. I have to still tweak it. Get out of the way. Uh, let's go to four there, that should be good. Yeah, I can't see anything here. And then we just pull that in. Grab this, put this in. There we go. So that looks pretty even all the way around. Okay, and then I'll take this and obviously reverse it so that it matches the same color. That would be nice and smooth. Um, I can't really put a bevel on here. This is one of the bad things about this. Um, if I go to this edge and I try to put a bevel on this, it Sometimes they'll go, sometimes won't, depending on how big you put that bevel. If I go too big, um, it'll actually bump into those areas where there's basically like this little triangle, so I can't do a bevel in those spots. If I add extra segments, sometimes that will cause a problem. So just use it with a bit of caution. Yeah, see, look at it. Just stop right there. Probably because I didn't select it. Never mind. Um, all the way around. Yes, that's good. Over there. Try that again. Bevel. I'm very surprised and delighted that that actually worked. <laughs> Sometimes, like I said, it don't work. I'll just duplicate it, and there we go. Okay. Now again, you have plenty of, of areas you can customize this and tweak this and modify it, whatever. Um, for something like this, you can really take this as a starting point to make other stuff, um, especially if you look at the different ways that people have done these little Pokeballs. If you go to Pinterest, if you've never been to Pinterest, it's a cool website. Um, but basically you can type in Pokeball 3D and it'll pull up Pokeball 3D stuff. Um, and you'll find like a whole bunch of different ways that people have created their Pokeballs. You know, that's kind of cool there. Um, being able to show this kind of thing, taking this project as far as it's not just a Pokeball itself, but there's actually other stuff to it. It's actually something inside it. You know, you can do lots with these kinds of things. Um, especially when you have these, I mean, if I go here and do that, and get rid of that one face I selected, and I extrude that, I mean, that could be a cool symbol that I have just kind of like notched into them. Right, and I could have other stuff going on inside here too. I could put bevels all around this and whatever else. I'm not going to do that right now. I could. Um, some other stuff that I want to show, kind of related to this too, because this is kind of like a mechanical type piece. Um, let me save this. I have not saved that yet. Um, So if I have this uh, piece here and I have a cylinder here, so I basically want to make a hole in the cylinder so that it would fit this, right? So let's say that at some point I decide that I want to give uh, my Pokeball arms. If you're in the animation class, you've seen the Pokeball with arms, okay, that kind of thing. Um, if you wanted to give him more than just the stuff up there, um, there's a lot you can do to that, right? So here, I want to cut a hole right inside here. Um, 
And if you haven't listened to a word I've said this entire semester, you probably booleans this and do that, and that does not work. I mean, obviously there's a hole there, but it creates terrible geometry. Um, you want to use the edge loops. You want to kind of isolate that area. Come on, right there. Okay, so that's basically the boundary of it. And then I'm gonna go down the middle and down the middle. And then what I can do is just grab these faces and just do that circularize. And you'll see pretty instantaneously that that works perfectly. And then I can just take that, just like the bridge I did before. Oops, I have to deselect and then reselect it and then bridge, there we go. And that creates a pretty sweet looking um, oops, opening inside there. And then I can give this just a little bit more thickness. I can go all the way around. Nope, go all the way around, I said. There we go. Uh, go to the thickness. There we go. And then I can add a bevel to this. Right, so that creates a pretty nice looking opening right there inside that. So if I'm creating a uh, hinge for this guy, like an arm or a leg or a whatever, very easily I could do that. Uh, if you have the time to do it and you want to play with it, you could even make a little arm that's very mechanical and you could have him pick up the ball and move him somewhere else. Um, or if you're in the animation class, you can use the rig that you have that is an arm that could pick him up and do whatever, okay? Um, So the end product of this will be a still image. Um, I want to take all the stuff that is relevant to this at the moment and that and group it all together. There we go. Uh, once it's modeled, then the next step will obviously be UV layout. If you don't remember UV layout, um, shame on you. Freeze transformations, always do that. I'll do a couple pieces just so you can get the idea if you've forgotten it or if you realize you didn't know it as well as you thought on the uh, test. So always free transformations, always delete history. Those are the two things you always do. Um, and then whatever kind of shape it is, that's where you want to start. This is more cylindrical, so I would use a UV cylinder and that's how it would project that cylinder. Now because this already has thickness to it, I would want to go to these edges here, there, 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 and there, and then the same thing on this side. Oops. And I would want to cut that, and then I would want to go and grab the shells and then unfold them. Okay, if it does a horrible job, like I don't know what it is doing here. Oh, eh. I also have to cut this uh, this way. Come on that way. So cut that, unfold, perfect. Okay, And then I will um, orient them so that they're straight and leave them alone. Okay, So that's good there. This one here, you'll actually see that because of us starting off with a NURBS sphere and then moving on from there, it actually um, lays the UVs out for us, okay? It didn't with the extrusion, so we still have to lay that out or we still have to do some cutting. But if you look at this, you'll see that it's pretty much already laid out. There's the hole, this is all laid out, and then it is like sewed up here, we'll have to adjust that. But it gives us a starting point. So I'm gonna go to right here, and I need to pick better colors here. This is like really hard to see. Maybe I'm just getting old, that could be it. No, it's not it. It went all the way around. Okay, it went all the way around. So now I'm going to cut this, and then I'm going to grab the shells. I lied. They did not lay this out at all. It should have. Uh, I don't know why, but it broke it up into separate pieces. That's fine. Uh, we will start off with a sphere, and that gets us there anyway. Uh, when you do a spherical projection, 
uh, are there options for this? Where is my channel box? Close this. Scoop that over. Nope, there's not. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going to pull this up to the top. Come on. Pull it up to the top. I'm going to click on this little T here and move this down. All right, that gets me pretty close. And now I'm going to do my cut that I just tried to do. So cut that, unfold it. Oops. Crazy complex. And then go through and you'll see like, okay, there's a big opening here. This is not where it's lined up. Pick one of the spots and just cut it from there. That looks like a good spot. It goes all the way to the edge. No, it doesn't. This one does. Yep, that one's good. So I'll cut that one. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Just kind of go over here. I could pick this one or I could pick that one. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one of them. That one goes to the edge. Cut it. And unfold. Now on this piece, uh, you guys didn't catch it. I didn't freeze transformations, but I didn't need to because I did not move or I did not scale it up at all. So all my transformations are already frozen. All right. Now what I also want to do because this is a sphere is I also want to cut it probably about there and there, just rough spots, just somewhere on the inside. Okay, and then we always want to look at the UV distortion. And you can see it definitely is somewhat distorted up here, which is kind of weird. Uh, but this is pretty flat, so if I just grab that patch and do a planar map from the Y direction, that should take care of it. So that looks pretty smooth now. I'll do the same thing with the inner one. And then that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'll grab all the pieces, I'll unfold it, just so they're all happy and unfolded again. I laid this one out, I could just delete the bottom and duplicate it and flip it over too. Okay, even if I was going to do any modifications to it, like any extra modeling, perfectly fine to do that and then do the modeling after. Um, you could also grab this piece, shift click that piece. Because I have the same amount of divisions in both ones, I haven't touched it, I can go to transfer attributes say component and say transfer and it'll actually copy the UVs from this one and attach it to that one so now they both have the same exact one so again another way you could do it each one of these pieces should be pretty straightforward um, and I could do that same technique if I just go to my UVs probably do uh, automatic on this one do my unfold there we go And for fun, let's turn the checkerboard on. And you'll see this one, of course, wah, wah, um, I need to freeze it. Now this one is gonna be a little bit trickier because I have certain things that I don't want frozen. If I freeze my rotations, um, it will not let this work anymore. It'll work, it's not the same way. Um, just so you can see it, if I go and freeze my transformations for everything here, you can see how this just kind of got offset. Well, let me go this way. So see how it's kind of wonky? When I freeze it, it like resets it so that it's like that. So it's fine, I can use it, um, but it does kind of screw up what I was doing. So it's still usable. Better to do um, this, just uncheck translate and rotate. Those don't affect the UV, just scale does. So if I just do the scale in that case, Yes, I know. And then I do my unfold. There we go. Perfect. Uh, then we do our orient, so they're nice and neat. And then I can just start with this one and then do that same transfer attributes. Mesh, transfer attributes. And then I go to the next one. <clears throat> what I'm doing is clicking one, shift clicking the next. So this, again, should be a huge time saver for you if you have pieces that are exactly the same. You don't have to worry about reduplicating them, relaying out each piece. Find ways that you can work smarter, not harder. The hardest thing is going to be remembering where you left off. 
but because I'm a super genius, I left off there. So, and then last piece is this one. Uh, it helps to isolate it. There you go. So that's pretty straightforward. That should just be probably a planar map from the Z. And then an unfold. There we go. Now, this area here did not do a good job. You can see that it's red. So I'm going to grab right there around that seam and cut it. And it's just because of the direction that it is and how tight it's getting in the center of this. I could also probably cut it about there too. There we go. So that just relieved a little bit of the pressure on it. Mm. This one, oh, you know what? Because that one has that cylinder cap, that's why it's not liking it. So I'm going to grab this and there we go. Cut it that way. All right, I'm getting blue in there, which is very odd. I may not have cut it correctly when I cut it. So wherever it's blue, that's where, that's where I'm going to uh, cut that piece. Oh, I had three on that one. That's why it doesn't work. It didn't work. All right, so that works there. So unfold this again just to make sure everything's cool. Yes. Um, I also remember if I'm going to be using this in smooth mode, I want it to be smooth. So I'm going to smooth that out and then do my unfold on there. There we go. So no blue. Everything's happy. Now that I have all the pieces done, then I can grab everything. Now notice I didn't do any layouts. The layout is only when you're done with everything. Once all the pieces are late are unfolded, then you can do a layout to fit them nicely inside that box. So same settings, 4096, preserve 3D ratios. We can rotate the shells 90 degrees. That way it fits it. We should probably save before I do anything else. Um, I also need to delete all my history again. Whenever you do that transfer attributes, those UVs are linked. So if one changes, it's going to change the next one. It'll change the next one. It'll change the next one. Maya will crash. So make sure you delete your history. Uh, 4096 is good. 55, yes. And layout. Okay, now the question always comes up, should we start spreading them apart? We did the spreading apart one on the gears because we had so many gears and we wanted a high-res texture. For something like this, we don't need a super high-res texture on every single one of these pieces. It's basically just overkill. Um, if this is going to be up on an IMAX screen, yeah, you may want to have separate UV textures for each one of those pieces. If not, we're looking at it on our computer screen or we're going to be putting it in our demo reel. Typically one map or two maps is sufficient. Um, if this was an environment, we would want to take all the pieces in the environment and put them on one map, but all the pieces of a computer we could put on one map. All the pieces of a desk we can put on one map and then we can go from there. Uh, realistically, you'll, you'll get a feel for it because when you start laying things out, and you start bringing them into substance and you realize, hey, this is really, this is looking very blocky, then you know that you need to start spreading it out into other maps, okay? So there we go. So all my UVs are laid out. He's ready to go into substance, and then I could start texturing him inside substance, bring the substance textures back here, light it, render it out. Um, with this one, we are going to be going into nuke with this. We will be using some separate passes. Um, I do want to show this. I open nuke twice just because I'm going to work twice as fast. All right, so this is a, um, for my After Effects class, we're doing a hologram. <clears throat> and the hologram is basically, I take the Thor hammer and I show them how I can render out some passes. They don't do that. I give them the stuff. I rendered out passes for the Thor hammer that spins around and then they use that inside After Effects to create this hologram. And then another student wanted to use a 3D item for a hologram, so then that just got me um, exploring more of stuff that we could incorporate into that. So um, this is, if I find it, there it is. 
All right, so this is a 3D model. So inside Maya, you can actually download motion capture stuff. You can download models inside of Maya itself. This is an alien. You can't see his texture very good, but it doesn't matter. Um, and he runs. So this is an alien running. So what I want to do is take this and use this as a basis for creating kind of like a hologram type effect. So inside Nuke, you see that there's a full-blown 3D model in here. It's not an image of a model. It's actually a 3D model. And what I did was I put a texture on it like that, okay? Now what I'm doing with this is I'm using this texture as something that drives the, um, the emission of particles. So I want particles to emit basically from his feet or waist or legs around that area and then nothing from the top. That way if there is a hologram, the hologram is basically a light that shines upwards. It'd be strongest at the bottom. You would have some sort of particle or whatever. Okay. Um, so there's the particles. So now when I rewind this and play it, now you'll see these particles running. So that's the whole point of bringing in the guy is so that I can get these particles to run so that when I put this on top of my other stuff that it looks like um, there's some sort of light or particle or mist or whatever kind of shining up. Um, I was very impressed with how far Nuke has come with his particle stuff. Okay, so my end result of that is this. Okay, so inside of Nuke, I'm able to get this, which is basically just a rendering. So instead of me going into Maya and doing all the stuff in there, which I totally could do, I wanted to be able to do this in Nuke because I can't control it as well when I want to change something in Maya, I have to change it, render it out, then come back. Then I want to make another change, I change it, render it out, and come back. Change it, render it out, and come back. So with this, I'm able to very quickly, with my actual end footage, put these two things together. Okay, so there's just the feet. Now I take these. So here is one render pass that I did, which is um, this x-ray guy. And basically, he's transparent in the center. Wherever the camera is directly facing him, he's transparent. Around the edges, which are facing away from the camera, he is opaque. And then, where's my other one? Right here. And then I have this wavy line one, which is kind of like that. Okay. And then I have this transition one, which is basically just going from uh, black to white. Okay, so what I do is I put all these together, and then I get this. And so what's happening is I have this transition coming up, plus I have the wavy lines, plus I have the x-ray. And so all of these things kind of blended together, and that's the end result of those passes. So these are actual renderings from Maya that I did um, that give me this. Okay, now I'm also gonna do a beauty pass on this, so I'll actually have like a full-blown color image of the alien so I can see what the alien looks like. Um, I'll also have like ambient occlusion, I'll also have depth, I'll also have anything else I may need, motion blur, whatever it is. Okay, now I take my particles, I take this pass, I put those two, two things together. And now you'll see that the particles are kind of fizzling as this like uh, hologram thing is forming. And it creates this very cool looking effect. Now what's also neat is my camera that was inside Maya that I used for all my renderings. I'm able to bring that into Nuke so that all these things line up perfectly together. So with this Pokeball, um, I'll have another lecture where I show this is how to take it out of Maya and do more passes, and here's different things you can do with this. Sweet. Cool. All right, so once you get done with your uh, ZBrush retouching, and then you can start working on the Pokeball one, that'll be our last 